Thank you, Sarah. Hi. Welcome to Icon Colombia 2020. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you for being here. Of course. It is your first time in Colombia? Yes, very first time. How was your experience here? I love Colombia. The city is so beautiful. Um, I've been here since Sunday and mm -hmm. I've had to work earlier in the week, so I haven't explored too much, but just being like surrounded by the mountains and all the greenery, it's so beautiful. And the food is really good too. Okay. Uh, have you heard about Pike in Colombia? I had never heard about it before I was invited. Okay, and how did you feel when you received our invitation to be a keynote? I was super excited. I was like, wow, people want me to keynote a conference? That's <laughs> shocking and amazing. Um, and then I was like, oh my God, it's in Colombia. I have a chance to go to Colombia. Um, I've been wanting to go for a few years. Two years ago, I came to uh, Peru and Chile and I had a really great time and I wanted to explore more of South America so I was super excited because this gave me a reason to come back. Nice. You have a bachelor of music, right? Yeah. Yes, I do. Can, can you <laughs> tell us a little about, about it? Yeah. Um, yeah, so my undergrad degree is in music performance. I am a classically trained trumpet player. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to play in an orchestra and play classical music. Um, there are not a lot of jobs, <laughs> and not a lot of job security uh, in that field. So I got to the end of, of my undergrad and I was sort of trying to figure out what to do next. Um, I'd worked in the library in my undergrad campus, just like a part-time like circulation desk worker for basically the whole time I was there. And I was thinking, oh, maybe I wanna work at a library. Maybe I wanna be a librarian. Um, so, <laughs> This is like the longest story ever. Um, so I, I got a, I got a full-time job working in the library after I graduated. Um, then I realized that I didn't want to work in the library. Um, it was uh, just this big bureaucratic institution where things were really slow to change, and I really didn't like customer service. <laughs> like, there's a reason why I'm a, I'm a data scientist now. I get to sit behind my computer and like not talk to anyone. It's great, um, but. Uh, so I started trying to, you know, figure out what I should do. I was thinking, you know, I don't really want to be a librarian. Should I go to library science school for my graduate program anyway? Um, so I applied to some different schools. I got into the University of Michigan School of Information. I decided to go there because I could get in-state tuition because uh, in the United States, college is very expensive. Um, and I, was, I grew up in Michigan, so. I figured I would go there and just sort of figure it out. Um, so when I got to grad school, um, the degree is Master of Science in Information, which sounds very vague, right? Like information, that can be anything. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, there were different specializations within this um, degree, like human computer interaction. There was like a user experience design specialization. There was library science um, and there was information analysis and retrieval, which is what I ended up doing. Um, but when I got to grad school, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, but then I started learning how to code. Uh, and I actually learned PHP first. Yeah. Um, and that was a very interesting experience. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I was like, this is interesting. Um, but then I, I took a class on Python and I started learning more Python and I loved Python. It was just it was compared to PHP, it's a really like clean, readable language. Um, that's not to say PHP can't be clean and readable, but mm -hmm. Python, like you have to write it cleanly and in, in a readable manner. Um, and I, I took a class on data manipulation where we were just manipulating data, um, discovering insights from it. And I love this. Uh, it was a lot of work. It was like 10 plus hours of homework every week, but, and it was like, we weren't even using pandas or anything. We were like manipulating data in like Python lists and dictionaries, and that could, that could be very interesting sometimes. Um, but I really, really enjoyed that, and this was in 2013. So, you know, I started thinking, okay, what can I do with this? What is a field that will let me analyze data in Python? And then at the time, like data science was becoming this big thing. Um, I was like, oh, maybe I'll check out this data science thing. Um, so I got an, inter an internship, a uh, data science internship at an ad tech company in New York. Um, they actually were like a C-sharp company, like all I did was C-sharp. And I showed up and I'm like, I know Python, sort of. 
Um, but I spent the summer like really, really learning SQL um, and then doing like a little ad hoc analyses in, in Python. Um, and the other thing I did that summer was I met up for coffee with a bunch of different data scientists to hear what it was like to work in the field. Um, and it just, it sounded like really interesting and like, just like solving a giant puzzle every day. And that sounded like a lot of fun. Um, and I also really, really liked New York. Uh, I had fallen in love with the city and I knew I wanted to move there. So then I started my second year of grad school. And I sort of knew, okay, I want to get into the data science industry. So um, I had uh, worked with one of the or during my internship, I worked with one of the organizers of the NYC Python meetup at the time. Her name was Celia, and she encouraged me to submit a conference talk for PyData New York, um, which happened in the fall of 2013. So I submitted my very first conference talk, uh, a, be a Beginner's Guide to Machine Learning and Scikit-Learn. I wrote down everything that I said on note cards and like read it off in note cards. It was very terrifying. Um, but then I discovered I actually like giving talks. <laughs> Um, and then like after that, um, yeah, it just, everything just sort of took off. I got involved with, uh, me and a couple of my fellow grad students. We started a chapter of Pi Ladies. Um, I got more involved in the tech community and started giving more talks. Um, I got a data science internship at this really cool startup in Ann Arbor called Farm Logs. Um, and it just, yeah, I, I really just like developed a passion for the field and then applied to a bunch of jobs in New York for when I, when I graduated and I got hired somewhere. And I was like, yes. <laughs> so that's like my long, like windy path. It's how I got from music to data science. A lot of it honestly was like being in the right place at the right time, right? Like being, you know, learning about Python and data at a time when data science was blowing up in the tech world um, and realizing like, oh, okay, you know, this is sort of like a newer industry. Maybe I can get in on the ground floor, start learning these skills and like be in the field and make an impact in it. So, yeah. But uh, maybe sometimes did you try to apply your computer science acknowledgement on the music field? <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've thought about it. Um, you know, there are companies like Spotify. Spotify mm -hmm. has a lot of data scientists. Um, I don't know. I feel I feel a little bit like my my music chapter is closed. But you know, if the opportunity came, um, like there just hasn't been I don't know a good like data science role for me at a company like that yet. Um, and now like I've moved out of New York, so I'm you know, <laughs> and I and I have a job. So, <laughs> um, but like you know, in the future, like you know it might be really cool to apply these two things that I know a lot about now uh, in, the same, in the same space. Great. You have been data science for a few years. Uh, which recommendations can you bring to anyone to want to start on that field? Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's kind of a difficult time to break into the data science field right now, at least in the United States. I am not super up to date on like the hiring industry in mm -hmm. Colombia right now. Um, but <laughs> at least in the States, um, uh, we have a lot of university programs for data science. We have a lot of boot camps for data science. And um, these two like arenas for learning are producing a ton of entry level folks. But um, there are not a ton of entry level jobs right now. So it can be a little bit harder to break into the field like as a data scientist. It may be um, a little bit more uh, well, another possible path could be to get a job as like a data analyst or even as a software engineer um, in, you know, in a role that will allow you to work with data or manipulate data. Um, so like if you're just starting out, obviously learning Python is essential. <laughs> um, you know, and not just like learning the data science tools of Python, but like learning good Python coding practices. Um, I think that's that sets people apart when they're looking for jobs. Um, if you can write clean, readable, you know, well-managed, efficient code, uh, that's also you know, analyzing data or building machine learning model, that's gonna separate you from a lot of people who either don't care about writing good code or haven't had the practice. Um, 
So like learning good coding skills, um, regardless of what field and tech you're going into, mm -hmm. even if it's data science, like I think that's like definitely key. Um, I think, um, you know, it's, it's hard to get that first job because a lot of employers want experience, mm -hmm. right? Um, but there are ways to get experience without necessarily having a job. So one thing that really helped me in my career was speaking. So whether you speak at meetups, whether you speak at conferences, even if you take, even if you're not an expert, like the very first talk I gave, uh, I didn't really know much about scikit-learn or machine learning. <laughs> but, but like uh, being forced to prepare that talk helped me learn a bunch about it. Um, and then I gave it and then, you know, people are like, oh, this person knows at least something about these two topics. Um, so I, I think that like speaking, and I know speaking can, can be scary to a lot of people. <laughs> uh, a lot of people are afraid to speak in front of others. I, I feel like I don't really have a lot of fear speaking in front of others because I was trained as a musician. Um, so like that has really helped uh, my mm -hmm. career in, the, in that regard. Um, but, you know, even if it's just a small meetup, um, giving a talk on something like, you know, there, there's no shortage of, uh, what am I trying to say? Oh, there's, there's not too, I'm sorry, there's not too many beginner talks. So like, even if you're a beginner, you can, you can give a beginner level talk. You can yeah. say, okay, um, you know, I was working with this library. I ran into this problem. This is how I solved it. Like, that's an interesting talk. Other people have probably run into that problem. Um, so I like, Highly recommend if you're trying to break into the industry, give some talks because at meetups there are going to be people who are looking to hire people. Um, that's the whole reason that a lot of companies host meetups is because they, they want to say at the beginning of the meetup, hey, we're hiring, you know, come talk to us if you're looking for a job. Yeah. Um, and then if you can give a talk at the meetup and then they're like, ooh, we are looking for a data scientist and this person gave a data science talk, you know, that gives you a little bit of a leg up. Um, so you know, getting involved. So getting involved in the community uh, is, is a big one. Um, you know, obviously, like there's a lot of online resources for learning basic skills. Um, I don't really recommend like boot camps or university programs necessarily. Um, you know, they're a lot of money. Or they they can be, um, and then they may or may not actually help you find a job after. Um, you you know you might spend all this money and then like you're still in the same place you would have been if you had just started learning on your own um it can be difficult to uh you know teach yourself things if you're not like super motivated to do it but if you can find like a community of people who like want to support you um when i was in new york uh, uh in my early days i was one of the co-organizers for the nyc python meetup and we would mm -hmm. have like a few meetups a week because we were a super large group um, so like on Tuesdays, we would normally have like a hack night basically where you could show up and work on whatever you wanted and all just kind of hang out and eat some food and get to know each mm -hmm. other. Um, so like that's an example of like, you know, you can show up, you're, you're learning something new, um, you know, go there, be around other people and learn it and, and chat with them. Um, so like getting involved in the community, like for me was really influential uh, in, in developing my career. So I really strongly advocate that for someone who's new. Nice. Okay, uh, coming back a little to Colombia, how was your experience in the event with the tenders in your presentation? Oh man, <laughs> this, <laughs> this is like one of the best conferences I've ever been to and I've been to many conferences. This is probably my uh, 17th or 18th conference that I've spoken at maybe 16th I, I kind of lost count um but I, I've been to many conferences and this is like this this conference is amazing first of all like uh just uh you know the the everything that ev you all have done for the keynotes is like really special like with the bowling and the you know <laughs> putting us up in the very nice hotel and there's like the speaker dinner later like that's really awesome um so thank you very much for that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then just like, I love meeting international tech and Python communities and everyone here has been so amazing and warm and friendly. Um, everyone has asked really, really great questions. Like the questions that I was getting after my talk yesterday were like so thoughtful and intelligent and like just, it was an absolute pleasure to take questions. Cause sometimes, you know, people might, 
you know, raise their hand and say, well, I think everything you said was wrong, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which is like not a pleasant experience. Um, but like, yeah, uh, everyone who asked me a question yesterday, um, it was, everyone was so friendly. It was just so great to meet everyone and chat with everyone. So yeah, this has been like a really, really great experience. Um, and the talks have been interesting. I went to this uh, time series analysis talk right before this interview and it was amazing. And I learned some things about time series analysis that I didn't know. So I'm learning things too. It's great. <laughs> okay, thank you so much and enjoy the event. Thank you. <laughs>